Okay, we're going to title this one, Why You Probably Shouldn't Do Steroids to Try to Get Swole. Um, so I want to teach you about anabolic steroid use and abuse, um, and a little bit about DHA, DHEA, which you can buy over the counter. So let's look at these for just a second. Okay, so remember what we have been talking about is the male sex hormones. That's all of these, okay. Um, Androstenedione, sometimes called androstene dione or androstene, testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Um, these are mostly in high concentration in the, um, oops, sorry. These are more likely to be, oh, come on. These are more likely to be from the testes than from the adrenal cortex. We'll get to the adrenal cortex a little later. So because we talked about the fact that these um, male sex hormones can cause lots of things to occur, um, including um, if you haven't grown yet, bone growth, right, and increased muscle mass, um, these are typically called anabolic steroids, not catabolic steroids, because they make you build things like muscles and bones. Now, if you, your epiphyseal plates have sealed, you're not going to get any more growth in height with using these or even having more of them naturally as an adult. So um, what is happening when someone chooses to use anabolic steroids to build muscle mass and they did not have a deficiency of anabolic steroids. So for instance, if you're an adult male with normal levels of anabolic steroids and you decide to supplement them to build muscle mass, will it work? Yeah, it'll probably work if you're working out because um, the combination of stressing your skeletal muscles in a certain way, which we'll describe when we get to the muscle chapter, plus high levels of androgens, um, will cause muscle mass growth more than without high levels of androgens. So what I want to do is briefly, I just want to talk about what happens if you supplement these. You can actually break your feedback chain. So remember the feedback chain that we're kind of working with is right here. This one really on this side. But I just want to build it again really quickly so that you guys can see what's going on and how you can break it with supplementing androgens. So let's build it one more time. You've already done it once, but let's do it again. Okay, so we're going to, again, construct the chain of hormones that ends with um, spermatogenesis and... Um, also androgen production, and we're gonna concentrate on testosterone, but it doesn't have to be testosterone. So if we are starting this story, um, we are going to start with the hypothalamus. Hopefully you can do this by now. And the hypothalamus releases the relevant hormone to male sex hormones is GnRH. By the way, you only start releasing GnRH when you hit puberty. I don't know if I mentioned that before, I can't remember. GnRH goes to the anterior pituitary, and the anterior pituitary releases two relevant hormones. And then I'm going to break this when I abuse anabolic steroids. Okay, so um, luteinizing hormone, and luteinizing hormone goes to certain cells of the testes. They're called um, the interstitial or Leydig cells, and it causes the production of androgens. Mm -hmm. And there's different proportions, but let's just call them androgens collectively. And that includes all of the blue ones in the diagram that I just showed. And then um, we said that the anterior pituitary also releases FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which goes to the testes and specifically the follicles of the testes where you find those cells that can go through meiosis. And then you do spermatogenesis. if you also have androgens. So androgens are necessary for spermatogenesis. Now the last thing remember that we said was that the feedback mechanism for androgens is how do you know when you have enough androgens? Well, they circulate through the bloodstream, they go back to the anterior pituitary and inhibit production of LH. They also go back to the hypothalamus and inhibit the release of GnRH. Um, okay, so 
what happens about spermatogenesis. We already said that the sperm don't swim through the bloodstream because nobody gave consent for that. But in Hibben, that hormone will actually feed back to the anterior pituitary and stop the production of FSH. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about what happens when you, um, instead of letting this do its job normally, when you start taking in what we call exogenous androgens. You are taking in androgens that you are not producing. And remember, this is not in a person who has an androgen deficiency. This is in a person who has normal levels of androgen. So what we are going to do is we are going to take in lots and lots of androgens. And even though they are not these specifically, what they are going to do is really dependably shut down production of GnRH and um, LH. And so eventually over time, what they can start to do is they can tell the testes that you don't need to make any of your own androgens. And when you tell the testes that for long enough, um, the testes don't make real androgens, which can actually stimulate spermatogenesis. So what you've ended up doing is you've ended up breaking this part and breaking this part because you've constantly got this feedback going here because you have high levels of exogenous androgens. And what will happen over time is this male, if he abuses anabolic steroids when he doesn't have an anabolic steroid problem, over time what will happen is your testes will just go, well, apparently I'm not needed anymore, and they will stop functioning normally. You will eventually stop doing spermatogenesis because you don't have the real androgens. You have exogenous androgens. They work relatively well for muscle building. They work crap on bone. You'll start losing your bone mass as well. And they will stop you producing the real androgens. And then eventually your testes will just go, well, I can just, you know, take some time off. And so this is um, two, the testes from two different 30-year-old males um, postmortem. Um, this is the testis of a 30 year old male that is approximately within normal range of size. And this is the testis of a 30 year old male who had been abusing anabolic steroids. We don't know how long he had been abusing anabolic steroids because he wasn't really um, forthcoming about it. But it's a really interesting post postmortem photo. So what um, ends up happening is basically if you continue to put androgens in, they will stop the production of real GnRH real LH, real FSH, and eventually real androgens. So you can break this. How permanent is it? And individual variability says we don't know. But if you've been doing it for longer periods of time, it's more likely to cause longer periods of damage. Now the other thing that people do when you can't get access to the real androgens or to the, I should say, prescription androgens. By the way, these exist in prescription strength um, because some people do um, have um, androgen insuffici insufficiency. And if you treat androgen insuffici insufficiency in either a male or a female, um, you can get a reduction in the symptoms of androgen insufficiency. What about this one, DHEA? Um, Dehydroepiandrosterone, so hard to say. <laughs> um, DHEA, that is weak anabolic steroids. It's not the strong stuff. It doesn't cause massive changes in muscle or anything else like that, um, but it is available over the counter. And so you, you might get some increase in muscle mass when you're using DHEA and um, working out. It's probably not going to be as dramatic as other things, and some of it may, might be water weight gain. Mm. But can you see that although it's not as likely, um, to cause feedback issues, it may actually cause some problems with regulation. So would I recommend it to <laughs> my son? Heck no, right? I wouldn't mess with your hormones unless there's a problem with your hormones because those feedback loops are really, really delicate. Okay, so as far as the feedback mechanism for testosterone, well, what is it? The feedback mechanism for testosterone is hormonal. It is a hormone that feeds back um, here and here and here. 
right? So the feedback mechanism for male reproduction and male sex hormones is all hormonal. It is not, for instance, sperm that feeds back. It's not a sugar. It's not a nutrient. It's not the nervous system. It is a hormonal feedback mechanism, which is why, of course, if you stick hormones in, you can break it. Okay, so, and you should be able to fill in um, alternate names, examples, major target, a um, bunch of targets, bone, muscle, a bunch of places, effect for these three testes hormones. And the third one is um, androgens is the big class. You can put all of those together. Make sure you know which ones are androgens. And then um, inhibin is the one that we just talked about that is released during spermatogenesis. And then mullerian inhibiting hormone is the one that was really only involved during um, the developmental phase to inhibit the female reproductive duct ducts from developing during embryonic and fetal development. And then this question says, can you reconstruct the chain? Yes, you can, of course. Okay, so that's it for um, androgens. Um, we are going to talk a little bit more about androgens when we get finished with the female reproductive hormones because there is um, a disorder that actually um, impacts both of them. Okay, so we'll stop there for that one.